there's a lot of content in this presentation tonight and uh, I'll apologize in advance the pace is going to be quite quick and uh, I think it's going to be uh, hopefully something that all of you tuning in tonight will uh, review at a future time to, to just get the, the volume of data we have going. But as Tim said, that's the uh, title, Weight Balance Engines, The Reality Check. There's a lot of stuff to cover in that title. But I wanted to start with uh, what really the Sonics Reality Check is. And for those of you that are familiar with the Sonics, you've heard us talk about this a lot. It's basically balancing an acceptable level of performance with what an average person can afford to build, fly, and maintain. That's what the reality check is, and that's what that big red check mark is right in the middle of our logo. Um, affordable, uh, we get asked uh, that a lot, and actually I hear all kinds of different definitions of what affordable is. This is our definition. For a complete kit aircraft, uh, this is kind of the cost worksheet, if you will, uh, where you can actually use this as a budget of everything to build a 1x spinner to tail wheel, $25,300. A Sonics, which is continues to be our most popular model of aircraft with its two seats. Um, everything to build the airplane spinner to tail wheel, 27.5. And that includes all the new matched hole parts we just introduced this past year. And it goes right down the line with our other models of YX and Xenos. I'll be referring back to this later. And this has also been thoroughly covered in some other webinars. This is what the complete airframe kit looks like. So it looks like we just took it and, and kind of dumped the kit out onto the floor. Uh, starts at thirteen thousand uh, bucks for the um, Sonic for the One X kit, and about uh, fifteen for a Sonix. Um, an important note, and I'll be referring to this when we start talking about trying to compare apples to apples in our industry, which certainly is a challenge at times to uh, uh, to try to figure out exactly what's included in a kit and what's not. I like this picture to speak uh, for us for what we include, but I wanted to note the air uh, airframe kit includes the motor mount the engine, uh, uh, the cowling, excuse me, the, the engine motor mount, the cowling, and the spinner for the factory supported engines. Uh, the total value of 1559. So uh, the other bread and butter product of, uh, of our product line is the AeroV. And the AeroV, we're not just an airframe company, we're also an engine company. And the AeroV is uh, 69.95 for everything you see in this picture. Um, we love the AeroV because uh, we, we believe in, in home builders' ability to put an engine together. And we're really talking about strictly an assembly process. We also put, uh, give you all the documentation, very detailed assembly manual, very detailed assembly DVD. And we believe this is a key component to the affordable aspect uh, of what we do and the overall picture and cost can also run auto fuel so that it continues to to save you money do your own maintenance with parts that are readily available and fairly inexpensive we also host a workshop series I'm always remiss if I don't mention this two-day workshops at the Sonics factory in Oshkosh uh, you can see the schedule down here we continually update this on the website October March June and then the following October so there's the 2013 and 2014 schedule I'd encourage you to plan ahead and uh, we offer some fairly attractive discounts to try to cover travel expenses. So uh, hopefully you can schedule a workshop in the future. So now let's dive into tonight's presentation. We're talking about weighing and weight, the, the, the weight impact in the overall design philosophy of the Sonics aircraft. Um, a critical tip to weighing any aircraft, use a digital calibrated scale. We have had many, many cases of Sonics aircraft losing weight uh, simply by moving over to one of these calibrated scales. I know it's quite commonplace for an EAA chapter, for example, to have a, a grain scale or a, a, a different kind of scale that you use uh, and has been used for years. But when we start getting into lightweight, lower weight aircraft, uh, it's very important to have um, accurate instrumentation. I also want to talk briefly about aerobatic capability. Uh, the Sonics aircraft are unique in a number of ways, uh, but one way, and it's not unique, but it certainly is, a, is, a, is rare in the home-built industry to have a fully aerobatic capable product line. The entire Sonics product line is robustly engineered to be fully aerobatic uh, at solo operation and utility for full growth. Utility category would be plus 4 Gs, so a lot of the common stuff you used to fly in, uh, common aerobatic maneuvers, positive G stuff. 
This greatly expands the fun mission of the aircraft and is a core value of our vision for recreational aircraft. You know, I always think of it as a roller coaster without the rails, <laughs> and you don't have to wait in line. But obviously, building aerobatic capability into a product uh, comes with a cost of structural weight. Sonics prototype number one, I'm actually going to go through uh, all of the factory aircraft as they sit in our hangars right now. And we've spent quite a bit of time uh, the past couple years as our, as our uh, prototype fleet has uh, increased. We actually have uh, uh, 10 <laughs> flying prototype aircraft uh, in our factory, which also makes us fairly rare in the industry. But on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, these pictures are the same airplane. You can look at the end number, 12 Sierra X-Ray, 12 Sierra X-Ray, now known as SX-1 is how we refer to it. Um, when this airplane first flew, and you perhaps first saw it in the pages of Sport Aviation back in 1998, it had a very early model 2200 Jabiru engine, a hand-carved wooden propeller, a brushed finish, not even polished, just brushed, with a painted cowling and wheel pants kind of to match as best we could, a single center stick, a lightweight velour upholstery, uh, no tail tips back here, uh, empty weight of 558 pounds, which is, in my opinion, a remarkably light aircraft for having an aerobatically capable plane. With a gross weight of uh, 1150, that would uh, give us a useful load of 592. I would argue we couldn't get the full useful load because of the way the CG worked out, but we'll talk about that in, the, in a future slide. As equipped in 2013, this same exact number one prototype airframe, serial number one airframe of the Sonics, uh, had, has now an early model 3300 Jabiru, a standard Sensenic propeller. Uh, it's fully painted, obviously, with the sun yellow Aluma grip, uh, dual stick control, a full leather upholstery. Uh, it has the tail tips, uh, and its empty weight is now 677 pounds. So it has gained 119 pounds through the years. With a gross weight of 1150, that gives us a useful of 473 pounds. So in rough numbers, you know, if, if you consider the FAA average person of 170, which we all know, that's increased uh, a full fuel load of 96 pounds. Um, you have to watch your, uh, your uh, uh, useful load in this airplane much more than we had to back when it was kind of a stripped down Sonics. Sonics prototype number two came on the scene shortly thereafter. It's a tricycle gear 2200, also an early 2200 uh, engine powered aircraft. And this airplane currently uh, resides in Italy, uh, 20 Sierra X-ray when it was here in the States. Um, hand carved prop, brush finish, wheel pants, uh, that was the tri-gear weight, 596 pounds. So at a gross of 1,100 pounds with this, uh, we'd be at a useful load of 504. So again, using 596, and looking back at this side of the 558, uh, we roughly have uh, 36 pounds that the tricycle gear uh, added to the base airframe. Sonics prototype number three, uh, the Aero V uh, 2001, which is shown in this picture. That's myself and my father flying over Lakeland uh, in 2001 with the Trisco Gear uh, uh, Aero V prototype as we, as we proved the Aero V product line and got that launched. As equipped in 2001, it had a, uh, the prototype 2180 Aero V with single ignition, uh, Sensenic wood prop, polished finish. Uh, with wheel pants, tail tips, painted cowling, center stick control, a lightweight upholstery, 636 empty, 1,100 pounds gross would have given us 464 useful. As it sits in our hangar today, 112 Sierra X-Ray has the new Aero V 2.0, so the full dual ignition and all the other accessories we've added to it over the years, a Sensenate composite coated prop, a painted finish, uh, the sun yellow still, leather upholstery drop seat, and the sport trainer, what we call the sport trainer, the dual center controls, which are now used uh, extensively with our T-Flight program. The empty weight's grown to 670 uh, with a, a, a gross of 1,100. We have 430 pounds useful. Sonic's prototype number one, yep, it grew floats. We, uh, Dad uh, joined me in the hornet's nest one morning for breakfast, so I think I'm going to get some floats. So I said, here we go. We're going to have a float plane, and we did. As equipped in 2006, same um, as the first slide you saw, except it's, it's polished and it's got the bigger engine in it in this slide. 
So kind of in between the two that you saw on that first uh, one two seer x-ray slide. Um, lightweight velour upholstery, the Czech Airworks 1200A floats. Empty weight of 831. Now we projected the gross weight higher because you'd obviously lose your aerobatic capability when you add uh, floats. So we'd be comfortable pushing the gross weight a little bit uh, knowing we're also slowing the airplane down a great deal. And the useful load would be about 440 pounds. So uh, that's just very, very few increase on the commercial side for this. So that's why it got pulled off the floats. Uh, YX prototype number one. Um, that's me flying it back in 2003, shortly after it flew for the first time. It's got the Aero V 2.0, Sensenic prop, painted finish, dual sticks, leather upholstery with a drop seat, empty 670. And again, with a gross of 1,100, gives you 430 pounds useful. Uh, the Xenos prototype number one, this is still sitting in our shop. Uh, as equipped in 2003, the Aero V 2.0, Sensenic prop, painted with a dual stick, leather upholstery drop seat, 777 pounds as it sits in this picture. Gross weight of 1275 gives you a useful of 498 pounds. So that's uh, right off of the Xenos spec uh, page right there. The Xenos, uh, as equipped in 03, this is Xenos prototype number two, which had the 3300 Jabiru, now lives in Tehachapi, California, with our uh, our partner Pete. Uh, painted finish, dual stick control, leather upholstery drop seat, 802 empty weight, 1275 gross for a useful load of 473. So hocus pocus, 498 with the Aero V, uh, 473 with the 3300. Xenos prototype number four. Uh, 122 CR X ray. This is uh, two of our newer uh, Sonics prototypes um, that we finished uh, right around, I believe it was 2006 uh, that we finished these. As equipped in 2013, it's got the new 2.1 engine. We use this as a main proving ground for that. Uh, Sensenic uh, prop, paint and finish, leather upholstery drop seat, smoke tank. Oh, that's kind of fun. Sport trainer, dual center controls, just like the picture shows. And yes, this is uh, actually one one two CR X ray, but they look identical. Six hundred and sixty three pounds, eleven hundred pound gross for four thirty seven. Useful. Here's our prototype number five. One two three Sierra X ray. This was built as the sport acro demonstrator. So it's a tail dragger with these longer ailerons here, and the ailerons are extend to half span. And now uh, if you buy the standard kit, you get the long ailerons and the long flaps, you kind of choose your own adventure with this. As equipped in 2013, it's got the 2.1 Aero V, Sensenic prop, painted finish, leather upholstery with a smoke tank. Of course, it's a Sport Acro, got to have a smoke tank. Single center control, 650 empty, 1,100 pound gross for 450 pounds useful. 1X prototype number one, near and dear to my heart. Uh, this is covered extensively in its own webinar, so I'm going to kind of breeze through this. But as equipped today, it's got the Aero V 2.1, Sensenic prop, painted, textured nylon, so a lightweight upholstery, uh, 584 empty, 950 gross for 366 pounds useful. So you can fit a fairly large individual and a full load of fuel in a 1X, no problem. And a 1X prototype number two, the tricycle gear. Really all a tricycle gear does is add weight. It doesn't really, you don't take anything off the airplane for a tri-gear, you just add it. This one does have the long wing tips. So that adds a little bit of weight in wing tip. Sensenic prop, 2.1 Aero V, and a textured nylon upholstery for 609 empty. So our tri-gear 1X is 609. Our standard gear 1X is 584. We'll be covering that in a little bit. We also have a couple of other unique airplanes. This is number nine, the YX Electric Demonstrator 270 DC. This is also covered in its own webinar, which I invite you to take a look at. And we'll be giving a presentation on this at AirVenture uh, 2013 in the Innovation Gallery they've added this year. And here's a Subsonics prototype number one, also covered in another webinar. And uh, we'll, we'll have lots of fun stuff going on at AirVenture revolving around the jet. There's Bob Carlton flying it, and he'll be back in town end of this month to do some more fun flights with prototype number one. And here's Subsonics uh, 2.0. So three reasons weight is very important in a light sport aircraft. Number one, we've got to maintain the useful load while protecting the design safety margins. So put my engineering hat on, this is my most important one, number one. Uh, number two, weight and balance. Depending on where you put the weight, 
Uh, if you, for example, have a very lightweight engine up at the nose, uh, you are restricted by how much you can put in the airplane because you'll end up in an aft CG condition, fairly obvious, especially as you burn fuel off. And then uh, last but not least is sport pilot compliance. This is very important to a number of our customers that want to fly uh, legally as sport pilots. And obviously with our full fleet being sport pilot eligible, uh, it's very important to a lot of people that we maintain that. So on uh, number one, we maintain the useful load protecting uh, design safety margins. You know, safety is very important to us at Sonics and doing things right from an engineering perspective. When we design an aircraft, we generate all the loads based upon the empty and, and obviously the gross weight that it's going to be operated at. The, the, the heavier an aircraft is, the slimmer the safety margins. So when you take a gross weight, for example, and you just boost it for the same wing area, same structure, you start cutting into those critical safety margins. And when we talk about doing aerobatics, for example, with a botched aerobatic maneuver, you can put momentary loads uh, on an airframe that are quite high. And the last thing we want is for somebody to compromise that structure uh, simply because uh, they overloaded the aircraft. Uh, by, by increasing the gross weight. So we've got to hold the line on just what the gross weight is. It's very, very important to me personally that we maintain the safety, uh, uh, great safety record of our aircraft. Weight and balance. Um, the further away from the CG you get, so a CG range is actually shown in this 1x uh, weight and balance arm diagram uh, with the 20 to 32 percent of the wing. So that's what these two lines are, 20% to 32%, to 20 to 32%. So you, we, when I do a, a CG calc, I start with a, with a point in, just in front of the spinner, and I take all the arms and the location of the wing and calculate out what that CG range. So imagine this a, a big old, uh, uh, a big old fixed uh, pendulum, if you will, <laughs> and you load a uh, teeter-totter. And, and I've, I've made a lot of progress as a design engineer when I cut out all the crap and look at this uh, 2D side view and think about everything in terms of where it is in relation to the, that CG range of the airplane. The further away from that range of the airfoil that weight's placed, the harder it becomes to operate in a CG range. So back to our other example, if we have a fairly lightweight engine up here um, and we want to still have full fuel load, which resides right here, and we want to put a fairly big person in there along with some baggage, the aft CG becomes quite critical. and You really have to watch it. Conversely, if we put a fairly heavy engine up here in the nose, um, now we may be able to take the battery, for example, and move that as far back as we can to counteract that, but you can only get so far. So if you put a heavy enough engine in there, you're going to be pushing the forward CG limits. So uh, very important to keep that in mind uh, as you think about alternative engines in these airframes. Sport pilot compliance. The clean stall speed is the exact criteria that we're talking about for sport pilot. It's primarily dictated uh, uh, by pounds per square foot. Um, and obviously with a fixed wing area, a heavier gross rate will increase the stall speed and can jeopardize sport pilot compliance. I mean, we're the kind of company that does things right. We've thoroughly tested our airplanes with all the published numbers. Uh, we uh, can say with 100% certainty we are sport pilot compliant in all those configurations. Uh, but where we get concerned, again, is when uh, people start pushing that gross weight up without thinking about maintaining that compliance. And you can get yourself... Uh, or the second or third person down the line into some trouble by, by pushing it out of that envelope. Um, so now the real meat of this uh, webinar, we conducted a very thorough study to weigh almost every builder option for empty and useful load uh, impact, starting with the nose of the aircraft and working aft. So I'm going to kind of power through these slides in fairly rapid succession, and this one you might want to watch a few times as we as we go into high speed mode. Uh, here is what our standard Sensenic composite coated prop, 8.8 uh, .8 pounds on the scale, uh, drop about 0.3 uh, uh, pounds for the wood, 8.55. The ground adjustable, which has the integrated spinner in it, 9.5. Not bad, guys at Sensenic, as usual, it's do a fantastic job. 
And then I've just been flying this Helix propeller out of Germany, um, and, and it comes in at about nine pounds. That's a fully composite two-piece propeller. The engine's in alphabetical order. So this is what I know a lot of you are tuning in for tonight, is kind of a discussion of what we believe are kind of the engines that would be options for you and are options for you. Um, and we conducted a survey of our, and this is kind of a neat industry, we're friendly competitors. Uh, it's hard enough to do what we do without having to worry about personality conflicts and, and, and people um, being unpleasant. So we, we've uh, approached them, our own uh, competitors, uh, for ramp weight, displacement, price, rated horsepower, at a specific RPM, and the other items that would be needed for a firewall forward package. A very important disclaimer, uh, Sonics Aircraft does not specifically endorse or recommend any of the engines I'm about to discuss for our products other than the current factory supported options. Aero V 2.1, factory supported engine, discussed thoroughly in many a webinar, I think a couple of them. 175 pound ramp, 2180 cc displacement, 80 horsepower, 3400 RPM. Price is $69.95, and the items for firewall forward, the motor mount spinner and uh, cowling are all included in the airframe kits, as we've talked about. There's the same slide I showed earlier, $69.95, uh, lower overhead, overall cost, uh, um, and something that uh, you're putting money in your pocket every time you maintain this engine with readily available service components. And the firewall forward, you have this in your back pocket. Uh, we, we've got eight of these installations at the Sonics factory, so uh, it's really convenient for us to be able to help you with uh, with firewall forward concerns and and uh, and, and a real dialed-in package. Uh, important to keep in mind. We've added a couple of options lately: the Nikasil cylinders, which take another 10 pounds off, uh, and the assembled uh, prop hub service, which has been quite popular for those that don't want to mess with it. I've been doing a lot of uh, Aero V 2.1 turbo testing. Haven't heard much, but there's a lot happening. This is our test cell. I took this picture today. Um, ramp weight, 199 pounds, uh, which is what we're projecting. Uh, same 2180cc engine, and we'd rate this at about 100 horsepower at 3,300 RPM. Price is TBD. It's not a product yet. It's not a promised product, but it's something that we're working hard on, and you're about to see why. Now, other uh, alternative engines that have been discussed, that we've heard discussed, Continental O200, uh, kind of the quintessential uh, experimental engine on a lot of early home builds. Ramp weight of 215 to 230, uh, displacement at 3277 cc, so like a 3300 jab. 125 horse at 2800 RPM, and this is just a range. I know it'd, it'd be hard to pin down an exact price, but 25 to 28,000. Now we don't have a motor mount for this, cowling, cooling baffles, uh, any of the firewall forward stuff worked out. Not to mention the Sonics cowling would come down and align something like that, split the carburetor and the oil uh, sump in two. But there's no Continental engines known to have been installed in, in a Sonics airframe. If you know of one, I'm interested in hearing about it. I'd love to see pictures. I'd like to see how they did it. But I don't, I'd be very uh, positive. I saw this discussed on our e-groups as of late. A big propeller has to be used uh, when you try to develop power at 2800 RPM. We simply don't have the ground clearance. We only have about 8 inches of ground clearance with a 54 inch prop. So obviously a 72 inch just, just can't be done. So again, you'd have to be looking at boosting RPMs in order to make power. Um, the engine model uh, Corvair. Uh, this has also been um, discussed heavily. I know of installations that have been done. Um, discussed this uh, and approached William Wynn and Dan Wiesman about uh, information they could provide and this is really the summary uh, that they that they provided. The installed ramp weight 225 to 230 pounds about 3,000 cc of displacement for rated horsepower of 120 at 3150. I honestly think the horsepower is more around 110 or maybe even a little less um, so you really have to push the RPMs to get the power out of it but I have I don't have any personal experience with this, so it's difficult for me to uh, to say. So I'm, I'm I'm publishing the numbers that they gave me. The price uh, for a, a running Corvair, twelve thousand seven fifty. So kind of delivered as it's shown on the stand, and uh, that's what William Wynn is offering. 
A typical do-it-yourself budget they offered at eighty-seven fifty, um, which I believe is very much obtainable. But uh, for that money savings, you're putting a lot of work into this engine core. You can go to the, one of the Corvair colleges, learn this thing backward and forward. But again, uh, the, the amount of work between this and something with a uh, fully supported and, and uh, standardized, if you will, package, uh, in my opinion, is not comparable. A lot, a lot of work in that. Here's the Firewall Ford package, which I know um, Dan Wiesman offers through his company, motor mount, 1200 bucks, and then an intake and support adapter for 300 bucks. And he's reported, and the Sonic airframes come, out, come in between 720 and 740 empty, um, which is quite a bit heavier uh, than our prototype aircraft at the Sonics factory. And I, b I believe that's unpainted, but we'll have to confirm that um, with Dan. But that shows a typical Firewall Ford package for a Corvair. You see that uh, they got it to fit uh, width-wise and uh, made their own custom cowlings and motor mounts and all that good stuff for it. Here's an interesting engine, the D-Motor. This is something that has very recently come on the scene. So again, this is uh, kind of with a big disclaimer. I have no personal experience with this, nor does Sonics. But we're watching it, and uh, we're very interested in, in getting customer feedback of people that are using it. And, uh, and verifying performance numbers and, and published numbers. But I've approached uh, the U.S. distributor and the D-Motor website, and the basics are 124-pound ramp weight for this uh, LF26, 2,700 cc's with a rated horsepower of 95 horsepower at 3,000 RPM. Like that number a lot. Um, the price 17.5 uh, don't like that number so much, but they say that includes the muffler fuel injection electronic ignition, the Jabro mount biscuits, uh, uh, stainless steel exhaust, and spark plugs. So again, the items needed for Firewall Forward. If you can use the 2200 Jabro motor mount, as they've said, that would be great. That would save quite a bit of hassle and money. Uh, use the standard uh, Sonic supplied cowling would be great. And obviously the spinner, which we like the looks of uh, in something that's not going to leave the airplane. Uh, items needed from other vendors, battery, oil cooler, wiring. They do have a six-cylinder development, which is interesting. So we'll be watching that closely, and I'll go uh, seek some of these guys out at, uh, at AirVenture and uh, see how they're doing with them. Engine, um, 2180cc or 2276cc long block kits. They're a primary competitor in the, in the VW engine market. Dry weight of 165, ramp weight of 190. Uh, again, the rated horsepower is 80 at 3,400 RPM. They can use the same fuels as us, 100 low lead, 91 plus octane, about the same price, 69 dollars uh, And then they uh, also, you need uh, uh, the firewall forward, same basic components as the AeroV with the motor mount cowling exhaust that you could use uh, right from uh, Sonics. Um, battery, oil cooler, and wiring is alternative. The Jabru 2200 is a factory supported engine, uh, ramp weight of 141 pounds, displacement of 2200 cc, um, rated horsepower 85 at 3300 RPM, uh, fuel 100 low lead or 91 plus octane auto, price of 15.5 for the engine just as you see it in the picture fully assembled. The items uh, needed uh, for Firewall Ford motor mount cowling spinner uh, supplied by Sonics Aircraft. Um, Purchased through Sonics, we drop ship them through Jabra USA in Tennessee, and they come with a one-year parts and service warranty. Uh, the Fire Ford installation support comes from us with a detailed package, overhaul cost of two to three thousand um, dollars, and a full service overhaul they offer for six thousand. Hunter low lead or auto fuel, 90 octane AKI. Um, the Jabra 3300, a fully supported Sonics engine. Ramp weight of 184, displacement of 3,300 cc, all of 120 horsepower at 3,300 RPM. Uh, 19.9 is the current price. Um, items needed, same thing, motor mount, cowling, spinner, all supplied with the Sonics airframe kit. Uh, same exact uh, numbers at the bottom for the warranty and the drop shipment. We supply a very detailed uh, uh, firewall forward and installation guide. Uh, this is the cover sheet of that. And uh, we highly recommend using our little aero injector with it. it. Makes it a little more fuel efficient. We found gets a little more power out of it. We also designed our own laser cut uh, cooling baffles for the package, which comes with the engine if you purchase through us. Another engine we hear uh, talked about a lot as an alternative is the Lycoming 
0235, uh, a dry weight of 243 to 255 pounds, displacement of about 3,800 uh, cc, so more displacement, displacement. Rated horsepower 100 to 125 at 2,800 RPM, very similar to the 0200. Uh, the price, 25000 up, also very similar to the 0200. Um, items needed for the firewall forward installation, you could probably use the same spinner. The spinner we supply is SAE1, which I believe is what the 0235 uses. Um, but uh, most other firewall forward components you're going to have to figure out, including motor mount, cowling, exhaust, uh, all, that, all that stuff. So, uh, again, no Lycoming engines that I know of that have been installed in the Sonics airframe. That's got to be mainly due to the weight and the same uh, design criteria of the 72-inch uh, diameter propeller to uh, uh, maximize the efficiency and the power of the engine. We saw this engine at uh, Sun and Fun this year. It's the MW Fly uh, B22L, very new. I think it was just in Sport Aviation uh, four or five months ago, Tim, if I recall. Uh, dry weight of 185 pounds, ramp of 220, uh, displacement of 2201 cc, dual overhead cam powered engine. Very interesting uh, approach to the engine. Um, they can use the same auto or 100 low lead price 17.5. We're seeing kind of a pattern in this price range. Um, items needed, uh, pretty much the same stuff as some of these other alternatives. Going to have to figure out a motor mount, figure out a cowling. Um, probably you'll be able to use the spinner. But uh, that, that's it. Uh, it's going to be a, a very unique installation. The Revmaster R230, another competitor of ours in the VW world, uh, they've rolled out this R2300 at 170 pounds dry, 190 uh, pounds ramp, which is about the same as the Great Plains. 2180cc, they, they say 85 horsepower at 3200 RPM with 100 low letter, 91 plus octane. 7685 is their price, but that's assembled in test run. So that's what they've been pushing lately is a, is a an assemb fully assembled product. Um, items needed, uh, the spinner again could be used and, and they, they do also say that the same uh, Sonics VW motor mount uh, and, and, uh, and cowling will work. So very similar in, the, in, in what they offer. The engine model, Rotex 912, this is uh, definitely one we get asked about a lot, and especially now that the Vans uh, RV12 has uh, decided to use the, the Rotax, they ask about it in Asonics. Obviously, the Rotax can be installed and flown in Asonics. These are just some of our builder installations that have been done primarily in Europe. Uh, ramp weight of 173 pounds with the exhaust. And then depending on what you need for coolant, according to the Rotax folks and, and Phil Lockwood, uh, who's become a good friend of mine, um, it depends on how much coolant you try to put in the in the uh, engine of what that weight is going to end up at. But that's in the range. Um, rated horsepower of uh, 120 at 3150. Um, price uh, is 16,000 ish. Um, items needed for the firewall forward. Uh, the spinner probably wouldn't use that even because of the uh, three bladed propellers that people have been using on them. Um, and they typically have the integrated spinner. But most other firewall forward will need to be fabricated, modified. So quite a bit of firewall forward work involved uh, with this installation. Um, and here's another Rotax 912 install. You can see this builder chose to actually make his own custom cowling and move up the thrust line a little bit. But there's at least three that we know of, all flying with the three bladed props. Now, uh, Rotax recommends a uh, minimum 68-inch diameter propeller, and as we've discussed with propeller clearance, that's an issue. So that's why these three-bladed props are, uh, I believe, what the builders have chosen. But uh, uh, you can go a little higher power on these Rotax as well, 18.6, with the new EFI uh, uh, fuel-injected Rotax at 25.2, which is almost the completed cost for a Sonics uh, with an Aero-V engine. Approximately the same ramp weight as the 912 UL. And uh, the UL power, this is also an engine we've been watching for a while. Uh, ramp weight of 160 pounds, so right in the range that works, 2592 cc's. This is a picture from their Facebook page showing an install in a 1X, um, which is in progress, I understand. 107 horsepower at 3300 RPM, like those numbers. 100 low letter, 93 plus auto fuel. And the price without radiator and exhaust is 16.7. 
Um, the items needed for Fire Ford, same thing, probably use the spinner uh, from your kit, otherwise it's going to need a custom motor mount. Probably will be able to use the cowling, in fact I know you can use the um, uh, Jabiru cowling with a minor modification to give you a little bit of clearance in the sump area and maybe up here at the top. But the 1X cowling shouldn't need much mod at all. Um, at least one UL power installation underway, I show that one. They do have the IS uh, models at a little more money, 20,000, 25,000. So the I model, a little less horsepower, can use the same auto fuel and is $1,000 less. Uh, UL Power USA recommends a second fuel pump, fuel connector kit, and oil cooler, total of about $1,200 of stuff. And he always says to try to budget between four and five for the whole firewall forward. Uh, um, setup. So um, numbers will be similar to other non-Sonic supported engine installations uh, depending on how much the builder decides to do themselves, like a lot of things. Okay, the Viking Honda. This has also been talked about a lot on our list. This is a, a builder here who's flying in California with his. Um, ramp weight of 200 pounds with exhaust, oil, and accessories. That's from uh, supplied by the Viking website and email. Uh, displacement of 1497 cc. They rate the horsepower at 110 at 5500. Uh, they say the fuel or advertised 100 low letter 92 plus auto fuel and a price of 11995. And here's a firewall forward kit that they offer. I know of at least three that are flying. Uh, the firewall forward packages from Viking include the motor mount, cowling, propeller, spinner, uh, fuel pump module, exhaust, cooling systems, all for $49.20. So again, that same four to $5,000 of stuff to complete the firewall forward installation. And this is an interesting note. When we talk about Volkswagen engines, a couple of our, or one of our competitors particularly, for a while was recommending this aluminum crankcase. And I never understood that. Uh, because of the weight difference. Uh, we, we've had great luck with these magnesium cases at uh, 23.8 pounds and here it is on the scale at 43.2 pounds for the aluminum case. So a huge weight penalty um, for my opinion, uh, no technical uh, advantage. So there's three basic categories of engines and we really uh, cut to the chase here and summarize, we've got kind of one category of our VW based 80 horsepower uh, engines that run from seven to eight thousand dollars. We have a higher power with a higher weight and a bit more money uh, with, with more action in my opinion required by the builder firewall forward. So the Corvair, the Viking, the Turbo Aero V, the uh, Turbo Aero V actually works with our standard mounts so that's kind of separate from these two but they run from ten to fifteen thousand dollars. The ready to install and run, um, the higher power engines with similar weight and typically more complete. So they come in the crate ready to run and you're paying a, a, a premium uh, with those, twenty to $25,000 by the time you finish the Faro Ford install. So the Jabbers, Rotax, UL Power, MW, D Motor, I put them all in that category. And again, there's our disclaimer. Uh, I am not, uh, this is information we've compiled and I certainly invite you and encourage you to do all of your own research to verify everything we're presenting tonight. And again, this is dated material now, so the minute we present this, uh, pricing uh, specifications subject to change. Here is the summary. So I'm going to leave this slide up for a little bit so you can kind of uh, digest it. But the engine's uh, weight and pricing in alphabetical order. So I kind of have them alphabetical A to Z or A to V in this case with the ramp weights here. You can see I selected engines, kind of everything I possibly could that was uh, under uh, 260 pounds is the heaviest one with the Lycoming 0235. And I think that's just impractical for the Sonics. But these are the prices for what is offered by these uh, current companies. You see the wide range in those numbers. Here is it sorted for you, uh, depending on what your interest level is. This slide has it uh, in weight from low to high. Uh, as we discussed earlier, the lower weight engines are not necessarily an advantage if it means that you, you, you can't use that whole useful uh, uh, load. Um, 
So 124 pounds for the D motor all the way up to the to the big Lycomings. And, uh, the Corvair is probably the heaviest one that has actually flown in a Sonics. And uh, now the next slide is sorted by price. So if you're really a budget oriented person, these are the three categories I kind of put them in. Um, the three VW based, if you will, same basic core parts. These are our competitors in the in the VW market. I feel personally we have the best weight. Uh, we offer the most complete assembly manual. Uh, we offer, uh, um, in my opinion, the most advanced package. Uh, and for about the same price of Great Plains, a little less than Remaster, of course, they're offering that as a assembled product. Um, Corvair, uh, you assemble is up there as well in the budget side. But again, I think the level of work with the Corvair is uh, a magnitude uh, larger than, than the other three. Um, Viking engine is there with the Corvair assembled for you in kind of that next price step. And then the final price step between the Jabru 2200 all the way down to the Continentals and Lycomings, they're going to be in that uh, fully assembled product range with, again, more technology um, and something that's really a, a bolt and go package. So hopefully this slide will help you at least get started in your search if you are considering an engine alternative or hopefully looking at something that's fully supported by Sonics. Um, the engine exhaust, uh, Aero V2 into 1 exhaust is 6 pounds. So now we're again moving back. We did propeller, we did engines, now we're moving uh, to the firewall forward. Um, engine uh, muffler is 3.7 pounds. We, we don't believe the muffler is necessary. I think the, the Aero V particularly sounds great with the 2 into 1 uh, exhaust on each side. Uh, exhaust wrap, cost it weight. Engine oil separator, 0.7, that's dry, so you're going to have some oil in there as well. Uh, there's a 2200 Sonics mount for your reference of 11.5. If you have an alternative engine supplier that's looking to supply a motor mount, have them supply the motor mount weight, and you have something to compare it to now. The 3300 jab is more weight because of this heavy truss. Uh, we're pushing the engine back, so we needed to engineer quite a heavy truss at the top, 13 pounds. Odyssey battery, we've had great luck with these. These are really good motorcycle batteries. Supply the power when you need them. The cold cranking amps we used to start, 15.4 pounds with the 680. 11.7, a number of our airplanes have the 545, little smaller package. Still really good power for, for the AeroVs and Jabiru series. These new series of lithium ion, very light, 3.5 pounds. Um, and we're very hopeful that this technology will continue to advance. I have tested this particular battery and not found it really to have the cold cranking amps that I wanted, uh, again, especially for a Wisconsin winter. But your mileage may vary. And uh, again, I'm very interested in following customer experiences with these batteries because losing um, 10 pounds or 12 pounds in battery weight is very attractive. Smoke oil tank with accessories. Uh, 3.5 pounds to be able to have that fun thing, including the little pump. Um, we just have a blast with our smoke systems. Anybody that's come to a Sonics workshop knows that. These are Vans air vents, which a number of Sonics guys have put in their products or in their in their airplanes. Couple pounds, about 75 bucks for a nice directed air system. I think that's a, that's a pretty pretty cool deal for somebody that's in a hotter climate that wants a little more airflow. Here's uh, my son, Miles, hard at work, helping me measure a piece of carpet soundproofing. Uh, two feet by five feet, 10 square feet for about 0.9 pounds. So if you wanted to soundproof your whole airplane, which I totally see as a waste of time, money, and weight, uh, you end up with about five pounds. And this is, again, just a single layer indoor-outdoor carpeting. So you may end up adding more weight inadvertently uh, by doing that. So I strongly discourage this. Our original aluminum fuel tank, which is, there was only one ever made, and that's it. Uh, 8.2 pounds for a 12-gallon tank. Our plastic fuel cell is 12.1 pounds for a 17.5-gallon cell. So we did pay a little bit of weight penalty, uh, about 4 pounds for this plastic tank. In my opinion, it's the best 4 pounds you can put in your airplane, period. The safety... Uh, of this tank compared to the aluminum, not even in the same ballpark. 1X tank is 9.7 pounds for the same plastic fuel cell. 
Autopilots, yep, they cost you weight. Uh, this is uh, the True Track, the Trio. I know that Dynan has come out with a system, but these two great companies have supplied uh, setups for us, and they're in our prototypes. Uh, one in the YX and one in 122CR X ray, uh, four pounds with the servos and everything. MGL instruments, in my opinion, the, the best game in town. Uh, we, we use them in all our airplanes now. About four pounds between the full Stratomaster Extreme and the radio combined. Uh, so technology continues to help us in this weight department, saving us a ton. Push pull throttle cable, 0.9 pounds. Or you can go with our throttle quadrant for 1.3. Same basic, you know, hey, 0.4 pounds matters. I've always loved the, the, uh, the saying that, you know, if you throw something up in the air and it doesn't come down, then you can put it on your airplane. When it comes down, don't. I love it. Dial speed trim, 1.5 pounds. I've, I've really enjoyed flying with this. Trim tab about a pound. So we have paid a little bit of a weight penalty to put this system in. But again, I think it's nice because uh, full control deflection, it hold, full, holds full back stick uh, on approach, much less workload. <clears throat> Canopy. Uh, the Sonics blank weighs 10.4 pounds. This is as we supply it in the kit. Made out of 0.118 inch thick plex. There's an aftermarket canopy out there. Uh, the aesthetics speak for themselves, and I'll be nice by not saying what, what's really on my mind here, but 13.9 pounds if it's made with thicker plex. So not only do you lose the, uh, the windshield, which is made out of Lexan in our standard setup, but uh, you end up gaining weight because it's a heavier canopy. So there's, uh, there's three pounds right there. Uh, this has been a popular option, or I have seen it on a few Sonics airplanes. It's a swing back uh, canopy. Um, some people really prefer it, but I think this picture speaks for itself when you look at all the additional parts required uh, in order to do this installation. And all these parts add to weight. And when we're, we're talking about a lightweight aircraft, you know, three, four pounds is just a swing, uh, excuse the pun, but uh, at what this is going to weigh. But uh, I, I personally, I don't think it's worth the wait. But uh, if you have a strong preference as a builder, that's the best part about this experimental market. You can do whatever you want. The 1X canopy blank, 12.3 uh, pounds. That is blown with 177 thick plex, but it's blown bigger. So it's a, it's a nice thin canopy while retaining nice optics. Um, the controls, we have a center uh, setup for 2.6 pounds or a dual setup for 4.6 pounds. The wheel pants are 2.2 pounds each. Nose pant 1.3. The standard uh, tires are 6.4 pounds. Those are the 410 by 5s that we supply in the kit. <coughs> I put a Tundra tire in, the <laughs> in quotes. A, a, an equivalent to a Sonics Tundra tire is a 505, which is about 9 pounds. The fiberglass wing tips are about a pound and a half each, or 3 pounds total. Uh, compared to the aluminum wing tips that are still in the plans, if you want to go with those and save yourself a little weight, those are about 1.8 pounds total compared to the three for the fiberglass. So this installation, in my opinion, is easier and cleaner. Uh, mechanical brakes are 3.3 pounds. The mechanicals with machine drums, 4.2. The hydraulic brakes are 4.9. So just a little bit, little bit more for our hydraulic brakes. But for those that want more stopping power, uh, this is a pretty elegant system we just released recently. Toe brakes. I, I put three to four pounds as an estimate. I Again, I think this is a huge step backward for um, the handling of the aircraft, but we'll cover that in a little bit. But uh, you can see the complexity that you can add with a toe type system can, can really add up to weight. This is the ideal pilot right here, this guy. Uh, he's uh, 14 pounds there. Now he's 28 pounds. So I just say I want to design an airplane around this guy. That would be a really cool airplane, a lot of fun. And here he is driving a little electric uh, vehicle with his uh, with his cousin. Um, will I fit? Unfortunately, we we are now miles size, so uh, we end up having to, to make airplanes, and we do in fact make these canopies and these uh, these entire cockpits fairly large. So I haven't met a lot of people, a handful, uh, maybe three, 
that have not fit all six, nine, or taller in the in the One X. But that gives you an idea of what you can put in. So we like to be able to allow for the payload to carry a heavier individual, a larger individual, and that all starts with the build process. Uh, the One X upholstery, two point nine pounds. Can't get much lighter than that. The Sonic textured nylon upholstery, seven point nine pounds. These are both factory offerings. Uh, used to be a factory offering, 7.3, so a little more. Um, the Sonics leather upholstery, 12.8 pounds. Wow, that uh, the leather upholstery adds up, and uh, that's a center stick version. You put a dual stick version, you push that weight a little higher. Uh, Sonic seatbelt, 2.4 pounds. Uh, One X seatbelt, 2.9. Always fly with shoulder harnesses. I think you've heard that from just about everybody. And then we have a center seat belt, which is kind of a crotch strap, if you will, for 0.7 pounds. Baggage bag, as we offer it, 1.8. A duffel bag with the nice EAA logo, about one pound. If you want to just sling a duffel bag behind the seat, I love it because it's uh, easy to throw your stuff in and, and lightweight paint. Here's a big one. The One X gained 16 pounds in the uh, tail dragger and 22 pounds in the tri gear, so I gave that a range. And I know our prototypes gained between 22 and 30 pounds with their paint jobs. Now this is painted by a professional shop, so they they paint airplanes for a living and are very careful not to lay too much paint on. And that's where we got the uh, the lighter weight. Now if you pour it on, do multiple coats, uh, multiple colors, I think your weight is going to go up from there. And there it is, uh, pre-paint, 562 to 584. So that's where I got the 22 for the for the one X. Interior prime. The interior surfaces are about the same area as the exterior surfaces. So if you do a, a heavy coat of interior prime, you're paying at least 10 to 15 pound penalty in the one X, and at least 15 to 20 in the Sonics. I just don't see that it's necessary. I've seen it in a few cases. I understand why people want to do it. But if your, your airplane is going to be hangered, and particularly if you're going to uh, 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 paint it when it's complete, I just don't see that that extra weight and hassle is worth it. So um, I'd recommend holding off. But it's your airplane. You do what you want. The tail tips, uh, 2.4 pounds for all three. Those are the two horizontals and the vertical, roughly the same weight for the 1X tail wheel of 1.1 pounds. Now we're almost finished with our weights. A 5 inch tail wheel 0.9 pounds. This is just a little plastic caster that won't last a long time but it's also very cheap so you just replace it every once in a while. 6 inch robust tail wheel. This is an aircraft spruce wheel for 2.6 pounds so that, that can add up too. So let's go back to the prototype number one. What happened between 1998 558 pounds and 2013 at 677. Here it is broken down for you. Um, we used to have the hand carved prop replaced by a 3300 prop, so 8.5 to 10.2 with a net plus 2. In fact, all of these are positive numbers, so everything we did with these airplanes, the same airplane, had a net gain weight impact. We replaced a lightweight 2200 with the uh, a mo uh, early model 3300, so 123 to 180, about 57 pounds we added. Uh, the, and, and that's not as big a delta now between 22 and 33, but at the time we did it was. 2200 mount by 3300 mount, there's a pound and a half, 3.9 for the fuel tank, best four pounds you can spend on an airplane. Push pull 0.4, trim tab 0.5, center control two pounds, stamp drums, the lure package replaced by leather, ooh, five and a half pounds. Sure looks nice though. Added baggage bag, painted it 30 pounds, added tail tips, ooh, right about 119 pounds that we added to this airplane. So you can see that ounces add to pounds, pounds add to, well, 119 in this case. But if you're proud of the airplane, how it looks, if you're happy with the uh, useful load, it's worth it. It's worth it. What will your Sonics weigh? Um, obviously, this similar calculation can be done for any of our models, Yxenos 1X. The weight we list on our website, empty weight, is 620 pounds for a Sonics. That's for an unpainted, standard gear, Aero V-powered, center stick, digital instrumented Sonics. 
The reality is uh, builders are going to add things like an oil separator, maybe a smoke tank, uh, want to go with dual controls, want to add hydraulic brakes, want to add a baggage bag, want to add some paint. So it's very realistic to be building a Sonics at 651 pounds. That's what the airplane in this picture weighs, our Sport Acro. With a gross weight of 1,100, you got 448 useful. So with this slide, I wanted to show you that if you upgraded to a tri-gear and uh, also wanted to go with an alternative engine that maybe added 20 to 25 pounds, you're going to end up with uh, 686 empty and only 413 useful. So in light airplanes like this, uh, these options and these alternatives can really have an impact. Again, there's the total cost worksheet. Uh, we've covered that enough, but I think that the $69.95 for the Aero V with all the firewall forward stuff we offer in the airframe, I think that's very hard to compete with uh, when you start looking at alternatives and the additional time and effort required. Um, I would love for every single one of you to come and fly one of our factory birds. Uh, the Sonics T-Flight program, it's, it's only been around for three or four weeks now and it's just been a huge success. We've had a great time with it. Uh, our chief flight instructor Joe Norris here came to us from EAA. Um, we charge 50 bucks an hour for ground, 150 for flight. You can come to a basic familiarization for 100 bucks. I would love for you to do it. In fact, the most common comment we've gotten so far is as guys have gotten out of the Aero V powered airplane, they go, that was the Aero V powered airplane. <laughs> and they're very impressed with the performance. And that's what we talk about when we talk about an acceptable level of performance for a clean, lightweight airplane. Can't say enough good things about the Sonic staff. And they're really a resource for all of you to use as you go down this journey of uh, an exciting journey of possibly building your own airplane, or if you already are. Uh, looking to have questions and they have answers. So I encourage you to, to uh, reach out to our very capable, kind and accommodating staff to do so. Here's the contact information. I'm going to leave this slide up for a little bit. Um, basic website. There's a telephone and uh, tech line and fax line and all that good stuff. Please come see us at AirVenture. They have a huge AirVenture presence and uh, come on out to a Sonics workshop soon. And with that, I'm interested in some questions, Tim. Great, Jeremy. Jeremy, thank you very much. Uh, we did get a, a number of questions uh, that have come in, so we'll we'll start right in with them then. And uh, let's see. Uh, Paul has a question here first. He asks, "Are the Aero V and the Sonex ethanol compatible?" A very common question. Um, it, no. Uh, the the ten percent ethanol is fine. I don't consider that to be uh, a showstopper. I, I've flown with it myself. Um, whenever possible, I would strongly encourage you not uh, to use ethanol-based fuels. Um, but that's just me. I, I, I did try to fly some E85 and, and it didn't go well. So I don't recommend it. Okay, great. And a uh, question here. Um, one of your first slides showed the um, load test on a wing and uh, the question is uh, how much load was there on that wing and uh, what wing was that? Sure, I'll pull it up for you and uh, let me know Tim if this goes haywire but I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull up the actual slide. I know which one you're talking about. That was the 1x uh, wing test that was shown in that uh, slide. <clears throat> And that particular slide showed a weight of 10,300 pounds is the answer to your question. So I wanted to make sure I could find the slide here. I apologize. Oh, I'm not as sharp tonight as I usually am, Tim. Sorry about that. Here we go. So let me pull that up. And can you see that? Yep, we got it uh, right in front of us now. So that's a lot of, uh, what's that, uh, bags of sand, or what is that? <laughs> that's bags of sand. So what those are, are, and again, I cover this extensively in the 1X webinar, so I might you to pull that up and take a watch. But these are 50-pound bags of sand, and they are stacked up to simulate the air load on, uh, on the 1X wing. So this is actually a center 1X fuselage and outboard wings 
and uh, the the forklift here is completely off, and uh, it's <laughs> the guys that helped us with this test. I mean, we got our work out. We figured out we lifted uh, well over a hundred thousand pounds that day um, in fifty pound increments. <laughs> That's what responsible companies do, though. We we test them. We know their capability, and we strongly encourage uh, our customers who want to be safe and uh, to, to, to use the product responsibly and watch those gross weights. It's a great philosophy to have. Lionel has a question here. He says, uh, what drove your tail volume ratio in your design, i.e. the elevator area, smaller or larger? <laughs> yep. Uh, again, a very common question. Um, you need enough tail to fly the wing. And uh, if you talk to 10 design engineers, aircraft design engineers, you'll get 10 different answers as to what tail volume is necessary. Uh, to be honest, we do not pull our basic tail volume numbers out of a book. We more or less base them on our past experience. And obviously with somebody like John Monette, my father, uh, who has been a tremendous mentor to me in terms of what an airplane needs to look like, and this whole webinar about being lightweight all comes from his philosophy. Um, it, it drives, we use the Sonaray, we use the Monterey, we use the Moni, we use the Sonex, and that when I'm developing the 1X. So it's all based on those ratios. It's not something that's readily available, in my opinion. Okay, uh, Brad is just wondering, have you thought about using the new Lycoming, the O233? We have looked at it, and that is the lightweight Lycoming. And uh, to be honest, um, I have talked to him, and I think uh, it's something that we'll watch closely, and I'd like to see more of them out there for sure. Um, again, uh, the weight is a challenge, even with that uh, that light sport Lycoming. Um, the same uh, criteria we talked about before with the big prop uh, uh, requirement to kind of maximize the efficiency of the engine. Kind of what my father always says, horses for courses. And the guys at Lycoming designed the engine for this style of prop. And uh, if we can't accommodate that in our designs, it's just not a good fit. Jerry uh, says he is one of the first to order and receive the ground adjustable prop. He said it was uh, recalled for testing. Is is the prop again available? Um, not yet, but uh, I have been testing it on 122 Sierra X-ray and now have moved it into the test cell. So um, let's see, without giving all my cards away, look for an announcement soon. <laughs> yeah, and and okay. by the way, Jerry, appreciate your patience and apologize for that. But it came down to uh, the Sonic's philosophy is always to make sure a product is where it needs to be before uh, before we responsibly sell it to customers. Tony uh, asks, uh, is the One X with standard tips sport pilot compliant? Yes. Uh, the question was, let's go to the two One X slides here. I'll slowly go to those. <clears throat> and this was also covered extensively in the 1X webinar. Um, this is what the short tips, if you will, look like. They'd be fiberglass from here to the tip. And uh, it is sport pilot compliant if you are under about 225 pounds. So full load of fuel, U225 to 230-ish, no problem. You start getting into the heavier loading and pushing down onto this 950 pound gross and I would recommend going with the longer tips to ensure sport pilot compliance. And that's why the longer tips exist. When you buy the kit of the 1X you actually get this long tip and you choose your own adventure. You cut it down or you leave it full length. Okay, Stephen asks, uh, he says, Hercules Propellers in the UK produces carved wood props for amateur built and light sport. These are tailored to the engine and airframe combination. Mm -hmm. Have uh, these been considered for Sonex aircraft? Absolutely. I'm quite familiar with them, and believe it or not, uh, that's a friend of ours, uh, an AeroV flyer. Um, and those uh, uh, propellers are gorgeous. I, I think uh, it boils down to we're, as a factory, 
really focused on uh, the the mass production, if you will, capabilities. And the reason we've had such a wonderful partnership with Sensenik, which you see on the nose of every one of our factory props, is they're able to deliver a consistent product on a volume basis with a known performance standard. But uh, there's obviously no question that there's a bunch of different propeller options out there. Some of them are, um, how do I be polite about this? Some of them are snake oil salesmen. So you have to be very careful. But most of them have been in this business for many years, understand engines, understand aircraft, uh, and will really deliver the product they promise. Um, so again, it really boils down to a mass production product, and Sensenik is able to deliver, bottom line. Okay, um, Richard says you showed a top-mounted oil cooler on an AeroV engine. Will this work with the Sonex cowl? Um, the answer is yes. Uh, you do have to, uh, that top-mounted cooler is actually installed currently in this airplane. And that top-mounted cooler is also installed in this airplane. So we actually have two of the top-mounted oil coolers that are currently flying in Sonic, a Sonix prototype and a WAX prototype. And it'll work. Um, I still recommend the standard cooler setup, which is to use the, the oil pump we supply and mount the cooler to the bottom of the engine. A little cleaner, a little easier to install, and it works. Cool. All right. Uh, we've had a number of comments in here about the Aero V Turbo, and just wondering if there's any more details you can share about that. Really not, um, it, other than to say uh, it's become one of, if not my primary project. So I've been really hammering on it um, with, a, with a very capable team in the R&D Center, obviously led by my father, John. Um, but I believe for, <laughs> let's go back to the roster here. So what I did not do here, and what it would be easy also to do, is to do a summary, if someone wanted to, of uh, what horsepower looked like. You could go back through my slides and pull the uh, horsepower, better yet, go to the manufacturer's websites of all these engines that we went through pull off the horsepower and make a similar chart. And the reason I'm personally so excited about the Aero V Turbo is that it not only represents kind of 100 horsepower, the holy grail of a light sport aircraft is to have 100 horsepower um, or more, <laughs> obviously, for under 200 pounds or right at 200 pounds, um, but also an, a, a very affordable price. So I, I'm spending a lot of time on it. The Sonics factory is spending a lot of time on it. And uh, I, I remain cautiously optimistic about it. So hopefully I'll have some news, uh, or we will have some news for you soon. OK, and there's a number of questions in here also wondering if uh, a, a factory assembled option for the Aero V is something that might be considered for the future. It's a question we fielded a lot, and uh, my, my, my answer to the question and our factory answer to the question remains um, that there is no better way for you to save money than to assemble your own engine. Uh, I, I promise you that I do not consider myself to be of a superior mechanical aptitude, uh, but I've worked hard at improving those skills and learning as much as I can. and. Um, to be honest, I, I don't believe that um, you can save much more money than doing stuff yourself. And uh, especially when you get into the maintenance of an engine, if you've assembled it yourself, and we're talking about assembly work, uh, who's more or more uh, qualified to, to, to do it and maintain it? And you fly behind it. You know your engine. Alan is wondering, why are some gross weights 1,100 and others 1,150? Yeah, that's a common question as well. Um, that goes back to this slide about the acceptable level of performance. So what we decided after crunching the safety factor numbers is we decided we would be comfortable as a factory 
um, publishing an 1150 pound gross weight for the 3300 Jabru powered aircraft. And the reason we were comfortable with this, you're talking about this number right here, is that you have 120 horsepower up front. So on a hot, humid day uh, with a fully loaded aircraft on, on a short grass strip, it sure would be nice to have a little additional power to get up and out. And uh, we felt crunching those numbers, we'd be comfortable with 1,150 pounds with that 120 horsepower component. Dropping the horsepower numbers down to 80 horsepower, and this is this is in error for this airplane with the 80 horsepower. This would be an 1,100 pound gross weight airplane. Um, it, it, we're not as comfortable, meaning it, it doesn't have that power safety factor. Uh, it does, however, mean that there, there's nothing structurally different with this 1,150 pound gross Sonics. Um, so you're cutting the safety margin. So um, you got to be more careful with this airplane in, in high G situations. Okay, and uh, Michael's kind of following up with that. He says LSA gross weight is 1,320. Sonics is 1,150 with the uh, Jab 3,300. Is this due mostly to structural limits, or is the weight limitation more a factor of keeping stall speed at LSA limits? Uh, yes and yes. The answer is yes to both of your questions. Um, the, the, the gross weight number, so we did not pick a gross weight and design uh, back the airplane into it. We actually looked at what the engines weighed, the structure weighed, what we could do with the airplane, what our wing area would be, all that, and, and we designed the airplane to be uh, 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 LSA compliant or support pilot compliant given those numbers. So all, all three of the factors come into play that we covered uh, earlier. Um, you can't push gross weight higher uh, if you expect to be sport pilot compliant. Um, if we went to a 1300 pound airplane uh, gross weight with the same structure, you obviously would not be capable. <laughs> the same structure is not capable. And from a weight and balance perspective, where is that weight going to go on? Where If the same structure where would you use that 1,300 uh, pounds? So all three of these come into play uh, as an answer to your question. Okay, William uh, wonders, how much weight does the use of temper foam in the seat upholstery add? I think it would be a very useful weight addition. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's one, obviously, um, I think you'd have to watch your load cases and maybe a good solution uh, with temper phone would be to make it an add-on cushion. So you kind of have your base upholstery that you fly your recreational missions with or you fly with your buddy uh, when you're more fully loaded and then maybe for your longer cross-country or your flight to Alaska which uh, Bob Barber is currently doing in his Sonics 3300 powered. Um, by the way we've had two guys visit, uh, um, I think one for sure has visited all lower 48 states and another one's close. Um, so it's false to say Sonics isn't a cross-country airplane and uh, I understand and agree that might be weight well spent. I I've picked up some temper foam and I would say probably three or four pounds but you'd have to verify that yourself. Okay and uh, Paul's wondering is polishing lighter in weight than painting? Absolutely yes. Polish doesn't add anything to the airplane. <laughs> Negligible weight to the to the airplane. So the lightest Sonics I've ever seen are polished. Okay, Rick is wondering uh, for weight and balance on cross country flights, can we bolt a twenty pound weight up front to allow twenty pounds additional in baggage? <laughs> um, it, it just depends on the case. So if you wanted to, um, I'm just going to go back to the engine stuff here. If you wanted to, um, it, it depends on what your what your your limiting factor is. So uh, if your limiting factor is uh, is CG location, so you have a nice light uh, engine up front, which I believe is where your question was coming from, uh, then most certainly you can uh, bolt some weight up front 
uh, to gain useful load and, and to gain the ability to put baggage in, of course. But if your governing uh, criteria is gross weight uh, and you've hit the limit, the 1,100 pounds that I'm comfortable with as an engineer, 1,100 for the 80 horsepower, 1,150 for the larger horsepower, um, uh, don't, don't add the weight. Okay, William has a question. He says, uh, what are the most important considerations for engine cooling in places like Arizona where it was 105 degrees today? And he's in the cooler part of Arizona. Sure. And uh, that, that is uh, a criticism of air-cooled engines. And that is certainly a limitation of air-cooled engines. When you do get into hotter climates, um, they are more of a challenge to keep cool. Um, but I'll tell you, uh, I have flown all of the products you've seen and, in fact, look for some published um, on, uh, uh, videos, flight videos coming soon uh, showing me flying our product line. Um, but I've flown them in 95 degree heat with 90% humidity. I mean, literally, we've flown them and they've stayed cool. So I know that I think that's a matter of sticking to a known uh, uh, setup and uh, working with the Sonix factory if you have any problems. Any tips that you can share right now about the installation to, uh, to try and maximize cooling? Um, uh, follow our printed instructions. Got it. Wondering uh, if a uh, uh, chance of uh, AeroV having uh, fuel injection in the future is uh, on the horizon. We're not, we're not overly enthusiastic about fuel injection. Um, and I think the primary reason is we've got lots of data using our aero injectors. And what we love about our aero injector line is it's, uh, it's, it's uh, fully um, adjustable. So you can really dial in an aero injector for, to maximize your fuel burn rates. So I guess I go back to why do you want to add fuel injection? And I believe the answer to that question is you want better fuel economy and you want more power. But I would challenge anyone to set up a, a, an aero injector system uh, with gravity fuel feed, no, no fuel pumps, no nothing. That's less weight. That's another system that can fail. Uh, but compare that to a really dialed in fuel injection system. And I think you'd find you have... Uh, have uh, s some very comparable fuel burn numbers and performance. Okay, and Dave is wondering um, what's the real difference in stall speed from 1,100 pounds to 1,150 pound gross weight? Not that much. Not that much. Um, in, in, a, in a light aircraft like this, it is um, something. <laughs> and obviously when you look at percentages, but we have test flown at full gross uh, at 1,150 pounds in the Sonics, and we're quite comfortable with the uh, the stall speed is is comfortably inside of Sport Pilot. So okay. I guess uh, my answer to your question is we've done it for you. You don't have to worry about it. David uh, says, would you consider scaling up beyond Sport Pilot limits to private pilot standards, a similar design, larger? Sure. Yeah, who knows what the future holds? You know, we're a company. Sonics Aircraft is a company that uh, has a. Uh, let me go back to my contact slide here. Uh, but but uh, we're obviously in the business of selling airplanes, and the more markets that we can enter, um, obviously, the more airplanes we can sell, the better off we'll be financially, and the more secure all of our futures will be. And you know, that that, that would be great. But right now. We understand our product line, everything you just saw in this webinar, extremely well. And I would argue as well uh, or better than um, a lot of our competition. Um, and uh, that's what makes us a special company. We, we Again, combining the airframe with the engine, um, constantly looking around to improve the airframe, to improve the engines. And uh, the logical expansion of our product line is to, is to get bigger. However, the last couple of years, we actually made the company a little bigger by going smaller, <laughs> by building the 1X. <laughs> so, uh, 
who knows what the future holds. I'm excited to design uh, a lot of different airplanes, um, but not anything that really competes with what you've seen tonight. Okay. Rick's wondering, is there any way to add a couple more amps to the uh, electrical system? He says 20 total with 80% usage limits some of the newer avionics systems. I agree. And you know, that, that uh, back to horses for courses, these airplanes are not intended or designed to have a full IFR rack. Now, I know that wasn't your question, but uh, uh, what I love about technology uh, is that they're becoming much more miserly in terms of how much electrical power it takes. And I love that. So I, I expect the next generation of digital instruments, which is really just a, a year or two away before we see the first versions of this, is going to be a Bluetooth panel screen with a central uh, uh, um, hookup unit that you would hook up all your probes to and it will communicate wirelessly with that central panel and you're done. So uh, now we're talking about very miserly electronics, uh, power, power requirements going way down. So I think 20 amps is going to be enough. But if you do need more, you could add a remote um, alternator, but that's going to start at 15 pounds. I think that's just limit your electrical use to what you've got in this system would be my recommendation. Okay, Jeremy, and we kind of bumped up against our uh, time limit here, but uh, with our problems we had earlier, I wouldn't mind uh, maybe going a, a little five more minutes longer if you're uh, willing to do that. You bet, of course, Tim. Okay, uh, Stephen's wondering about uh, the electric uh, airplane and wondering if you have considered lithium air batteries. And he, he doesn't mean lithium ion, he says lithium dash air. Lithium air, yeah, we've been following batteries for a long time. And uh, um, to be honest, uh, there is no battery that we are not willing to look at. <laughs> so um, lithium air, I have studied a little bit on them. Um, I haven't necessarily seen them at the price point they need to be in order to uh, produce a 15 kilowatt hour pack which is what we really need minimally for our electric aircraft. But uh, I don't care if the electrons come from a flux capacitor. <laughs> I don't <laughs> care where they come from. If it's lightweight, if it's low cost, if it gives us an hour or two of flight time, where do I sign up? Send me that information. I want to buy it. Um, but for now, we're stuck with lithium polymers because I think they're the best technology we've got at the lowest cost. Tom is wondering uh, if T-Flights uh, are going to be available during Oshkosh. Um, they are not. We discussed this thoroughly. Uh, the airspace around Oshkosh come Air Venture time is a nightmare. Um, I believe the experience will be much better if you coordinate it with your workshop attendants uh, or make a special trip out to Oshkosh. I know that's asking something, but uh, to be honest, preparing yourself as a pilot uh, getting serious about making an investment in airplane, I think it's a minimal investment in the big scheme of things. So uh, even if you can't do it during Air Venture, by the way, we got tons of exciting stuff coming for Air Venture. So uh, there'll be plenty for you to see, even if you do, don't do the T flight during that week. Okay, Ham asks uh, some heavier alternative engine installations are moving the battery to the tail for weight and balance. Does positioning yep. the battery in the tail cause any undesirable flight characteristics? That's a really good question. In my experience, no. No. In fact, uh, one of our own prototypes has the battery in the tail, and that is the, the electric airplane has a 12 volt. Uh, 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 battery in the tail, lead acid, as a backup system for our uh, instruments and, and to power our electronics. Um, and it needed it every inch we could get out of it back in the tail. Okay, uh, Mark is wondering, uh, he says there's been some discussion on uh, Sonex talk of the BMW R1200 engine mm -hmm. with an off-the-shelf uh, uh, reduction unit uh, from takeoff in Germany. Uh, there was a write-up uh, in EAA Experimenter. Um, any comment or details that you might have about that? I'm just not familiar. I, I did read that today and didn't have enough time to react to it, but uh, 
you know, I'm I'm always interested in learning more. So uh, uh, I, I who who knows? I always say when we talk about alternative engines, I have to do shameless plug here on the ROV, of course, while we're talking. But uh, you know, when we talk about alternative engines, I, there's nothing off the table as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but what I always like to do is not be what my father coined the phrase, the bleeding edge. <laughs> I am mm -hmm. growing tired of being on the bleeding edge. And we have so many great, established, low-cost uh, uh, power options right now, mainly talking about the Aero-V, but obviously there's some other competitors in that same market. Um, ah, you know, it's got to be around for a while. It's got to be easy. It's got to be accessible. I have to see a number of customer installations and get their feedback. Derek is wondering if the uh, 1X style cowling where it has the valve covers exposed, if that's available for a Sonix. Uh, you could do it in a Sonix. You know, if you've just put the Sonix 2200 Jabru cowling on, you could probably just cut out the valve covers. But uh, I think it's pretty cool looking too myself. But uh, yeah, that, that, that just not necessary at this point because we supply the right cowling for it. Once once you start working with fiberglass, you'll know why. <laughs> We're very happy to just use what we supply. Okay. Uh, do you recommend the uh, MGL gauges with uh, without any backup steam gauges? Yes, I I fly all of our airplanes that way. Yep. Excellent. All right, Jeremy. Well, we've uh, definitely hit the end here. Uh, we went our extra five minutes here to make up for the uh, technical glitch we had uh, at the beginning. I, I sure do appreciate you taking the time to uh, be with us tonight and share this uh, information about uh, all the different line of aircraft Sonex puts out and the weight and engines and everything else. And thank you, Tim, and the rest of the hardworking EAA crew. 